Hello, one of my machines is broken down. It's a Sony Betamax SLC9, and I use this one for transferring PCM digital audio because it has a special feature. It has a switch on the back, which you can use to switch off the dropout compensator. So the error correction in the PCM decoder works more reliably. But the SLC9 is uh, not a very reliable machine. And this one has broken down with problems with the uh, front carriage. Uh, which is very troublesome, uh, so we need to find out what's broken and see if we can get this going again. Right, let's get stuck in. Okay, I've already removed the four cabinet screws and I can tell you that something has fallen out of this machine. Here's the part that's fallen out, it's a small gear and it comes from a rod at the front of the carriage here, uh, which they should have one each end of this and they're a bit prone to uh, splitting like this one has. There was for a while a uh, service kit available where you could change these for brass gears. So that definitely needs fixing but I suspect that's not the only thing wrong with this. Something else has gone wrong but there's no point trying to fix any other faults with it until we've uh, resolved that. So I'm either going to glue that on or find a replacement. Let's start by taking the front off. Now I will admit it's been some time since I last worked on the front loading mechanism of one of these machines and I also absolutely hate them. And here is this bar that goes across here and provides drive from one side of the carriage to the other, or basket as Sony call them. So I can take this out easily enough and we can look at it, but I can't refit this onto here until it's in position. So there's a notch on here which goes into the notch on the gear that way round So if I was to glue that on in situ, in theory, that would be my problem solved. Are there some alternatives? I've worked on several other beta machines and the later ones have got a different arrangement here for driving the lacing mechanism and there's a gear there that splits. There's this gear here which splits on later models and you can fit a gear from kits you can buy on eBay which are provided for uh, model cars and the likes and it's got the same size and teeth so it's possible to install that there to perform this function too but it does not have the flat in the middle to align it on the bar and it's important that the teeth at each end of this bar are lined up properly otherwise the carriage will be skew whiff so though that would work, I'm a little bit wary of installing that. I may do though. My, my secret stash here of Sony Beta spares includes Hall Effect sensors for the drum on most Sony Beta machines and STK5441 regulator chips which are used in some of the later models. So do I install that or do I glue what we have? What I'm thinking of doing is taking the good one off the other end, because that's not split, installing this on one end, getting it aligned properly, and then fit the good one on the other end when it's in place. That way I'm not trying to align this while it's installed in the machine. That sounds like a plan. I'm going to glue that on, but have it aligned properly to the other end. The way to do that, I think, is to have a look under a microscope and we'll see that the flat is aligned exactly where there is no tooth. So if I put one on the other end, gap exactly where the flat is, then I have it properly aligned. And then I can just glue that into place there. Right, that's the plan. Right, I think that's fairly securely glued on now. I went through all the uh, teeth with a little bit of paper to pick up any surplus glue that had got in there. 
So I can take the good gear off and fit this, making sure that it's aligned properly, and then put the gear back again. Well, that's the plan. Yeah, I've backed it off slightly, so I've got a good chance of uh, getting it straight when I fit the uh, other end of the gear on. OK, that's installed, and I'm fairly confident that it's uh, correctly timed on both sides. It looks nice and straight, and if I operate the gear, it remains straight. It's not going all skew with, so I think we've got that right. But whether there's another fault, we will find out. Because it's a very complex system. One of the things that goes wrong is this bottom uh, little cover that pops up saying cassette inside. That goes all wonky and it often breaks. So let's see if we've been lucky or if we still have problems. So I switched it on. Oh. Are we ever lucky? Well... Let's see if eject works. Oh, we've been extremely lucky. That was all that was wrong with it. When reassembling, we have to deal with gravity. These switches are going to go down by gravity, so we need to flip the corresponding switches all to the bottom position before we install the front panel and then check that those switches work properly. For some reason there's a screw missing here, so I'll fit that. Right, a quick final check that everything's happy. So we have, it says Betamax here in black, and then when we put the tape in, it says cassette inside. So that's a, a kind of a block to putting another tape in. It's an overcomplicated way of doing it, but that's all seemingly working properly. Uh, and you'll see here we've got a nice bright display that's working. Uh, I have covered on another video uh, working on the DC to DC converter, which when it fails, knocks out the display and also, though you wouldn't notice anymore, knocks out the tuner. I should give a shout out to Mr. Betabyte, a YouTuber how, who has covered these in some detail as well and has also mentioned that very same gear fix. Well, I hope you've enjoyed what we've done today. That tiny little gear brought down this beautiful SLC9. This is going to go back in place in my studio now, uh, set up to run PCM digital audio tapes. I'll do plenty more content on audio and video technology in particular, but occasionally I do some other things as well. Bye for now.